Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be exploding a zip bomb on my MacBook. So what a zip bomb is, it's a zip file that's specifically created to be very, very small, but expand to a very large file. So what I have here is I have this website. I'll put a link in the description to this website. And this talks about making a zip bomb. And here's some examples here. There's this zbsm.zip. And the file is 42K and it expands to 5.5 gigabytes. And this is expanding to more or less just gibberish. It's not expanding to like a movie or anything. But it, um, say you had a 4 gigabyte hard drive, that was actually a thing back in the day, then this would fill that entire thing up. And this is just a 42 uh, kilobyte file, so it's just a tiny file. If you make this a 10 megabyte file, you get up to 281 terabytes. I mean, that's massive. So you think just a tiny 10 megabyte file. So this first file would easily fit on an old school like floppy disk. A 10 megabyte file would easily fit in a, a email attachment or something. And then a 46 megabyte file would be 4.5 petabytes, which uh, you have to use a special capability to do that. But that's huge, huge um, capability. So these zip bombs exploit certain um, ways to store the file in the zip file to make these massive files when they um, expand. So you can read down on this website. It talks about a lot of the math behind it and the, how everything's ordered here. And it's kind of interesting. So I've downloaded these first two, the uh, zbsm.zip and the zblg.zip, so the small and the large, um, to my computer. And I have those here. And the uh, small one is 42 kilobytes, and the large one is 9.9 .9 megabytes. But I'm not going to fill up my hard drive with this, but we are going to de decompress the smaller one at least. So I'm on my command line, and I'm in my downloads folder. So we can look at it here. And we see this zbsm.zip. So I can type zip info, and I'll type the name of that file, and I'll hit enter, and you'll see it has all of these files in it. It's, uh, it starts at zero and it goes up to 5x. So it has all these files inside of that. And you can see here it says it's 250 files and it is, let's see how this is, it's uh, 5.4 gigabytes uncompressed. So what I want to do is I want to uncompress this but I'm going to pipe it to dev null. So um, First I'll type time, and that'll track how long this is going to take. And I have a note down here, and I'll put this down in the description also. I'll type unzip space dash p, and what that will do is that will pipe the output of the file um, to standard output. Type zbsm.zip, and then I'll say pipe, and then I'm using this PV, and I have Mac ports on my Mac, so I can install other um, command line options. And I'll put a link in the description of my video on installing that on your Mac. And I've installed the PV command on my Mac, and that's a progress bar. So I'll type PV space dash T B R, and T is like time, I think, B is bytes, and R is the rate, maybe. Um, and then I will send that to dev null. So I'll run this, and you can see it's telling we're at 800 megabytes, write a gigabyte, and we're 210 megabytes per second. And we're almost there. Okay, there we go. So it took about 25 seconds, and it um, expanded to five gigabytes. So what it did as it was expanding that, it was sending it all to dev null. And dev null is just kind of like nothing. It's like shooting something off into space. It um, doesn't exist. So we were expanding this, but it was automatically just throwing it away. Because if I did run this, that would, well, yeah, it's only a five gigabyte file, so I could handle that. But we'll do this. I'm not going to run in the whole thing on this other file, but we'll do the same thing on the ZBLG here. And you see it's doing the same thing here. And this would continue on for quite a while because this is going to 
expand to 281 terabytes. So if I actually did open that on my machine, it would fill up the entire hard drive. So that would be really bad. And I will say I have not tried to double click on these because I don't know if the system would, I don't know what would happen. I don't want to find out. So, <laughs> but as you can see here, we've already hit the four gigabyte and I've never run this the whole way. I, it would probably take a very long time. I calculated out how long it would take once, but I don't remember what it was. I should have written it down, but it would take a very long time for this to complete. So, so that's how you can unzip a zip bomb on your computer and not fill up your hard drive is using that dash p command. And this works on the Mac, uh, probably will work on Linux too. You can type unzip um, help or man unzip and read the help file and see if that p is sending to standard out. And if you do that, and if, as long as you're sending it to dev null, you're fine. Now, I guess I should mention, if we go back up to the first one, you can also just run it like this without the progress bar. So you can do unzip dash p, name of the file and just pipe that right to dev null. And if we run that 12 seconds later, it will, I think it was 12 seconds, or it was 25 seconds. 25 seconds later, it will say that it's done and complete. So that's the unzipping of a zip bomb on a Mac. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye. And here that just finished. Thank you.